Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're continuing our series on documenting LED heat lamps and the temperature increases that I get over time when using high intensity panels. This time we're using the AG1500 Plus that's from AliExpress that we reviewed in a previous video. And we're going to set that up about 11 inches away from my arm, getting about 69 milliwatts per centimeter squared of intensity on my arm and we're going to measure the temperature increase over time so this is something that's never been done before it's never been documented before that high intensity led panels can induce heating on the skin because most of the time most of the studies were using lower intensity leds and photobiomodulation and low level light therapy are by definition non-thermal light therapy so they're never intentionally heating up the skin and at most they measure maybe one or two degrees celsius increase for those studies so all the mechanisms we understand are based on light therapy and not on heat therapy once you start to add in the heat therapy aspect you've, you've created a whole new type of therapy so it needs to be measured and studied almost separately you can't assume the same parameters are going to work for heat therapy that do for light therapy and then one hack I've been using for the past year is I've been using this workshop fan and blowing it on me whenever I use my non-contact LED light therapy panels. I'm blowing that on me. I'm getting cool air on me and keeping me nice and cool because the cooler your skin is, is actually helps with the increasing transparency of your skin and it helps with penetration. So there's a lot, all these techniques that we can use to keep our skin cool, keep it a little bit safer and keep it in the photobiomodulation range, even if you're using higher intensity products. So the results of this, so that way you don't have to watch me take all the measurements. Obviously I've been doing that uh, for full transparency that I'm not just making up numbers and that, you know, I'm really into documenting this and doing it the right way. We got up to about 41, almost 41 Celsius uh, in about 10 minutes with just a panel, you know, no cooling, just a panel at about 11 inches away. And again, this is probably happening to a lot of people. They're using high intensity panels. Oh, we've got the highest intensity panel. We're 150 milliwatts, you know, 200 milliwatts, you know, 170, 180. Those numbers, if they were real, you would be probably burning yourself pretty quickly. So, and I've gotten some emails of people saying that they're feeling burning sensation with my competitors products, uh, but not mine. And they thought that was weird. And why wasn't my product burning them? Cause they thought it was normal to burn themselves with red light therapy, which, you know, was just really a mess up situation that we've gotten to a point where everyone's completely forgotten the basic definition of photobiomodulation. And they think they're supposed to have a heat therapy to the point of feeling burning. If you feel burning, you got to pull away. You got to move away. Your body's telling you something's wrong. So, you know, people are overriding their senses because there's so much false advertising of, oh, we're medical grade, we're FDA grade, we're FDA approved. And, uh, you know, experts are, are endorsing all these heat therapy products. So you have to, you know, lie to yourself and say, oh yeah, it's supposed to, I'm supposed to feel heat. Everyone lied to me and said this, this was medical grade when they're not selling you anything like what was done in the studies that use much lower intensities. And there's a lot of reasons why they use lower intensities uh, but anyway with the cooling fan I get basically no temperature increase so at least it's a lot safer I'm not inducing as much of a heat effect and you know you might not get as much problems and like I said if you actually embrace that photobiomodulation is supposed to be a cold light therapy like the name we know like cold lasers then the real hacks are going to be how do we make red light therapy if you really want high intensity, how do you use higher intensities and keep the skin cool? Which again, a lot of studies have already done. They've used pulsing, they've used external cooling t techniques. So there are ways to keep your skin cool if you really need that extra boost of intensity. But I would say, you know, it's unnecessary most of the time if you've got a properly designed product. One of the biggest things with heat therapy is just to monitor your skin temperature. So if you've got a high intensity panel and you've convinced yourself that heating is the right thing to do, then you got to get a thermometer and quantify it. So don't just believe people saying, oh, I combine light therapy and heat therapy and it feels great. What temperature are you reaching with the skin? How long are you exposing yourself? How often are you doing it? It's just like dosing anything else. So until you get to that real dosing stuff, if they just say, oh, it feels great to do heat therapy, 
you know, they're selling you pseudoscience once again that they haven't quantified. They ha they don't have references for. They just have anecdotes and they have rhetorical argument. They're using photobiomodulation studies and low-level laser studies, which are all non-thermal, and then they sold you a heat lamp. So again, I'm all about just transparency. If companies are proudly selling heat lamps, they need to advertise it as a heat lamp. So that's the basic, is that we need to be smart enough to know the difference between light and heat therapy. And then we can go from there and actually have a debate of which one's better and what's what's better for certain circumstances. But we can't have that debate if everyone's delusional and they don't know the difference between light therapy and heat therapy. There's two types of LED light therapy that's happening in this industry. There's one that's causing heating and one that is low enough intensity, usually less than 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. If you're low enough intensity, you're creating a non-significant amount of heating. So that's generally more desirable for me because it has tons of studies to back it up. We know how to dose it pretty well and it's extremely safe. Once you start doing heating, the next step you have is burning. So, you know, that's why heat lamps have to be in that class two medium risk category of safety because they have to acknowledge that there is certain risks with heat therapy and with low intensity LEDs that don't cause significant heating, there's actually exclusions and exceptions that they don't need to even get FDA registered because they're so inherently safe. So anyway, you can watch the rest of the video of me, you know, taking my measurements again, but I want to give you this intro and maybe uh, save you a couple minutes of watching me sit down and, and measure my arm temperature. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, welcome back to LED heat lamp therapy. And this time we've got a, a real panel that's been on the market. It's the AG1500 Plus that I got from AliExpress. I did a full review of it um, in a previous video, so you can go back to that and learn all about it. Um, but this time we're going to use it at a close enough distance with this nice uh, setup I've got here to see how much temperature increase I get with a practical panel on the market. So maybe you want to use this if you have this panel panel or if you have a similar high intensity panel um, so you can be mindful of the heating and the distances that I'm going to use here and then I'm going to do a part two in the same video where I'm going to use a fan just you know a, a shop fan that I have that I usually use for my full body setup even though I use my low intensity panels I like to keep my skin really cool because that helps increase penetration it helps increase skin transparency when your skin's a little bit cooler so we can see how we can use a fan or other cooling methods to combat uh, getting too much heating and so you can enjoy relatively higher intensities but still keep your skin cool so technically that still could be photobiomodulation which is non-thermal a lot of times they use fancy techniques like pulsing and uh, external cooling methods they have contact tips of some of the laser tips will have a, a cooling probe on them um, so they use all these cooling methods they wouldn't need these cooling methods if the objective was just blindly heating people they cool you know they want to keep the skin cool they use pulsing they use other techniques or or the easiest thing is just to use low enough intensities that don't cause much heating but if you want fancy things if you don't want to have higher intensities higher peak intensities with pulses or a higher intensity and then you use an external cooling like a fan that's one way you can tolerate higher intensities and still get mostly photobiomodulation effects okay we'll do a quick check of the spectrum and the intensity so we see we get 76 milliwatts per centimeter squared that's a nice warm intensity and uh, you can see you know it should have uh, five wavelengths you see a couple of those peaks uh, in the, the spectrum you know 660 630 uh, 8 30, 810, 850, they all kind of get mashed together in the near infrared because they're so close together. Um, but you know, you get kind of a smattering of wavelengths, so it's a little bit more representative of, of some of the modern panels you get on the market being higher intensity and multiple wavelengths. So we'll see what kind of heating effects we get from this setup. All right, the ambient temperature is 20.9. Okay, let's check the starting skin temperature 36.1, about 36.1. A good starting temperature and we'll start the timer and let's get going so the distance my arm is to the panel is about 11 inches so if you do have this panel or a similar you know high intensity panel this is about 11 inches all right let's check about one minute already feeling nice and warm 36.5 36.4 36.4 36.6 so yeah a decent jump up you know 
by uh, 0.7 almost, 0.6 in just one minute. And if you remember in my review of this panel, I was taking measurements all the way out. I think it was like four or five feet away. I was saying, if you want true red light therapy photobiomodulation, that should be non-thermal. You have to be at least five feet away because it's got very narrow beam angles. So that means you have to stand either even further away because the light doesn't decrease in intensity. Uh, so, you know, that's the problem. 36.9 at two minutes. 36.8. 36.8, okay, almost three minutes, 37.6, 37.6, so it's a decent jump up in just uh, three minutes, okay, almost four minutes, 38.7, 38.4, 38.4, so yeah, I'm just starting to feel that stinging sensation, like it's, it's a little bit too hot, even at four minutes. Okay, almost five minutes, 38.8, 39.2, six minutes, 39.3, 39.7, 39.7, so a bit too high intensity for me. Okay, almost seven minutes, 39.7. 40.2, 40.2, okay, almost 8 minutes, 40.1, 40.5, 40 40.5, 40 okay, 9 minutes, 40.3, 40.7, 40 40.7, so it's kind of leveling off at 40.7. So again, for, you know, for some people that might be an okay level for heat therapy, but for me, I'd rather be a little bit lower. Okay, 10 minutes, 40.3, 40.8, 40 40.8. So it's maybe still creeping up, but it's, it's mostly leveled out, so that's good. Okay, 11 minutes, 40.3. 40.9, 40.9. So yeah, very slowly creeping up now that my thermoregulation has probably kicked in. So it's still creeping up, but it's still mostly leveled out. Okay, so that's it for, for this test. Okay, this is the last round of doing LED heat lamp therapy. It's the exact same setup, same intensity, but now we've got my Vornado workshop fan that's gonna be cooling off my arm while I'm trying to heat myself up with the high intensity light. <clears throat> and so this is a very important hack. This is how I use my full body panels, even though they're lower intensity. I like to keep my skin cooler so that way you get um, better penetration and better absorption. Um, so this would be a really important hack that everyone should be talking about and, and doing, except, <laughs> you know, people don't think it's a hack because they think it's desirable to heat yourself up. All right, let's get started. The ambient temperature is about 20.4, and that's even more important because we're blowing that, that cooler air across me, and my starting skin temperature is 35.8. Okay, about one minute. Let's check it. 35.7, 35.7, 35 35.7, so I'm almost a little bit cooler now with the fan running. I barely, I don't feel any like radiant heat, I just feel the cooling from the fan. Okay, almost two minutes. 35.7 again, still 35.7. So it's 35.7 across my arm, so we're keeping very cool even at two minutes. Okay, almost three minutes. 35.7, 35.7, 35 35.8 35 on the forearm. So I'm back to normal, about 35.8. Uh, my hand feels pretty cold because it's right next to the, the fan here. Um, but the arm is, is still, you know, at normal temperature. Okay, four minutes. 35.8, 35.8. 35.8. So again, I'm just <laughs> barely back to to my starting point. So no no temperature change even after four minutes of, of higher intensity exposure. Okay, five minutes. 
35.8 so yep so very consistent keeping very cool so now i can tolerate higher intensities but not have a heating effect so it's still technically photobiomodulation okay six minutes 35.8 still 35.8 very very exciting stuff here no no temperature increase Okay, seven minutes. What's it gonna be? 35.8, 35.8, what a shocker. And we're still gonna keep going, try to get the full, you know, nine or 10 minutes. 0.8 at eight minutes, still 35.8 all across my arm. Okay, nine minutes, let's check it. 35.9, uh-oh. 35.8, okay, so we had one one small point, one tenth of a degree in one of my measurements, but oh, mostly it's 35.8. And so that should be it. The, the cooling fan wins out. We can keep cool. We can do true cold light therapy with a cooling fan. Um, you know, that's a, a legit way to do it. Obviously, I probably overdosed if you calculate your intensity and your joules, but you know, if some people want higher intensities and want to keep cool and keep safe, you can use a cooling fan.